Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and of course this is Shackleton the Explorer. When we talk about weather and climate, we almost exclusively talk about the, the, uh, what's happening in the lower atmosphere called the troposphere. And the average height of the troposphere is about uh, 11 kilometers or so, but it varies quite significantly from about 7 kilometers at the poles, that's the uh, height, thickness to about 17 kilometers at the equator and the reason why we're interested you know in mostly in the troposphere is because you know this is the part that we live in this is where our weather occurs this is where our climate occurs the layer above the troposphere is the stratosphere most people know that the ozone layers are there to protect the earth but there's also there's lots of interactions between the stratosphere and the troposphere. In fact, changes that occur in the troposphere can then be propagated down vertically into the, into the uh, troposphere and affect extreme weather events and so on at the surface of the planet. And by the same token, events that occur in the lower atmosphere uh, can then can affect the can in turn affect what happens in the upper atmosphere in the stratosphere for example jet streams uh, one example is jet streams when they when they hit elevated regions like mountains the horizontal motion of the jet stream can be transferred into vertical motion a very very large vertical component of motion which can carry that fast moving stream of air up into the stratosphere and can cause significant events in the stratosphere, which then feed back into affecting the, the lower atmosphere. So I'm going to talk about all of these things in uh, this, this video series. I'm going to talk about the vertical coupling, if you like, between the stratosphere and troposphere. What happens in the stratosphere generally happens slower. Um, and uh, you know slower occurring events and they can manifest in troposphere changes weeks or even uh, months and years later um, and thereby affect uh, you know weather conditions at the surface so when we talk about extreme weather events for example cold air air outbreaks uh, extreme heat air extreme heat events air pollution events wildfires, wind extremes, storm clusters, uh, tropical cyclone changes, changes in sea ice cover, etc. All of these tropospheric events, all of these events that affect us can be in turn affected or triggered by uh, what's going on in the, in the upper uh, atmosphere, in the, the stratosphere. The evolution of the stratosphere is slower and uh, there, there's, uh, and it takes longer, so there's a bit more predictability compared to the troposphere. So I'll talk about all of these different factors, things like the trop uh, stratospheric meridional overturning circulation, the QBO or quasi-biennial oscillation, um, the stratospheric polar vortex, and uh, you know sudden stratospheric warming, where it can be broken up quickly and how these things go and affect weather on the surface. So first of all, I'm going to show you here. This is from Earth uh, Null School. Okay. So what we're looking at is we're looking at the air, the wind patterns, um, the temperatures, the colors in the background, and we're looking at 10 hexapascals, which is high up in the atmosphere, in the stratosphere. Okay, so we're looking at the, at the stratospheric uh, polar vortex here. There's Greenland here, this is the North Pole, and um, we're looking at the, at the polar vortex here. This, was, um, this is what it is right now as I'm filming this video. So uh, December 28th, 2020, this is a pattern that we see. And there's many predictions that we're going to get a sudden stratospheric warming, which will break up this vortex. So what will that look like? Well, I'm going to go back to this exact day three years ago. So this is 2017, December 28th. 
and uh, you can compare the two situations. There are distinct some differences, but they're, the, the, ba the main features are, are there. So this is 2017, December 28th. Um, if we click here, you can see the temperature is about minus 80 degrees Celsius there, um, and then it increases to about minus 40 or so uh, out in this region. Okay, so now what, let's play forward. We'll go forward a day at a time, and you can see the changes that are occurring in the, um, and this is in 20, so we're into 2018 here. So this is the, the splitting of the polar vortex and the sudden stratospheric warming from three years ago. So you can start to see um, two gears meshing here. So we're into uh, the first week of January. I'm just cycling through it a day at a time. You can see how the thing changes. So that's sort of mid-January. And you can see these distinct, you know, distinct flattening of the main vortex here. We're getting to the end of January 2018 now. Okay. And we're into February. Now watch what happens. Okay, so there's a lot of day-to-day -day changes. That are occurring and this is the first week of February now we get this two distinct uh, we've got we've got a splitting here of the before we had a singular uh, vortex and now it's there's all these sub vortices here okay this is the February 9 2018 going another day another day the 12th the February 13th February 14th February 15th. And look at this pattern. This is an amazing pattern. And actually in this region, we reach above zero, 8.2 degrees Celsius in this region. Here we get a cold area, minus 56, and there's all temperatures in between. So the, the stratospheric polar vortex is completely um, shattered. In this case, we see one, two, three, four sub vortices, and we can continue on and you can see that it's just a big mess, okay? It's nothing like, so it went from something that looked like this, okay, one polar vortex, to a whole bunch of sub-vortices. So what happened? We had a sudden stratospheric warming event, and um, we'll have a look at uh, what that means and, and how it happened. Uh, first of all, you know, going back to my um, blog, I did a... Um, I did a video. I, I did a set of videos on the top ten weather and climate disruption events of 2020, and I, I like this picture. This picture was taken at the, um, you know, uh, it, it was taken um, just over a year ago in Madrid, Spain. So this is Stuart Scott, Peter Wadhams, myself, and Peter Fiakowski. Um, it's too bad Peter Carter's not in this picture. I probably have a few with him in there also. So this was, we, were, we all sort of collaborated and worked at the, at the climate conference in Madrid, Spain. So please uh, check out my uh, blog, paulbeckwith.net, and consider a year-end donation to support my efforts. These were the video series. I had four videos on this uh, climate disruption of 2020, but there's so many events. How do you pick, you know, the top 10? Like it's almost impossible. And of course, uh, you know, follow me on uh, Facebook and uh, I will talk about this. I just noticed that uh, Peter Wadhams is talking about iron salt aerosols, um, which is a very interesting way to remove some methane from the atmosphere, but also to fertilize the oceans and to cause some low level clouds to block some sunlight. So it does all of those things. And of course, uh, you know, my Twitter, follow me on Twitter at paulbeckwith.net. My website, my Twitter is at Paul H. Beckwith. And uh, this was the, the, the previous blog um, where I talked about the top 10 climate disruption events. And uh, Amy Butler is a person who you definitely want to follow if you're interested in upper atmospheric physics and what happens in the stratosphere. So when you get a splitting of the uh, of the uh, polar vortex, the zonal mean wind speeds drop, so the models show it dropping from in early January, 
And if that happens, that'll, that indicates sudden stratospheric warming. And um, the temperatures also increase significantly. Okay, so, so uh, you could follow her, uh, Dr. A.H. Butler, on Twitter to get all that information. So what are we talking about with, a, with the polar vortex and the polar vortex splitting? Well, this is a good article. Um, there's a couple articles here. I'll show you three different articles. The polar vortex is going to make you put on a sweater. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Yeah, right. Um, just kidding. But, you know, if the polar vortex does get split by a sudden stratospheric warming, then that will make northern Europe extremely cold and it will make northern Canada extremely warm. Okay, the, the vortex will split and we'll get a bipolar type situation in the Arctic. So this just gives you sort of a, a, a graphic of, we have the stratospheric polar vortex here, which is, the, which is what I showed you here. Uh, that's at the 10 hexapascal level. So very low pressure, it's a high level one. And this is the tropospheric polar vortex, right? The jet stream that we normally talk about. And of course that's at about 250, um, 250 millibar of uh, pressure. And if we go winds, this is what you typically see. Okay, and it's very fractured and convoluted. Okay, but they're two different things. So um, we're talking now about the interactions between the stratosphere, what's happening in the stratosphere with the polar vortex, and the lower atmosphere, the troposphere, where all of the weather occurs, and in the, at the poles, the dividing line between the troposphere and the stratosphere is only about seven or eight kilometers. And to give you, put that in context, the thickest ice on Greenland um, is, uh, you know, on top of bedrock. And that uh, is at an altitude of about 3.5 kilometers or halfway up to the dividing line, the tropos tropopause, which is the layer uh, between the troposphere and the stratosphere. So remember, we've got the two different uh, regions, the two different vortices there. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is the tropospheric polar vortex at 200 odd, 250 milli millibar, and you can see it here. Um, this is, or, you know, this is showing the 500 uh, hexapascal um, level, okay. Uh, which is about halfway up the atmosphere. So as the Arctic warms, this guy slows down and becomes much wavier and stuck in place and causes extreme weather events. Okay, heat waves in the ridges and coldness in the troughs and storminess in the troughs. Stop, troughs are the low pressure areas. The ridges are the high pressure areas. Okay, now in the stratosphere, you get more of a pattern like this. And Normally, we don't worry too much about what's going on in the stratosphere, but there are strong driving interactions between the, the upper atmosphere, the stratosphere, and the lower atmosphere, the troposphere. Okay, one of them is a sudden stratospheric warming, where you can get, for example, the jet stream goes over the Tibetan plateau, is driven upwards into the stratosphere, splits the polar vortex into too. So this is an example of an event in 2013, a very, very strong event, where suddenly we went from a strong polar vortex to a very, very strong sudden stratospheric warming, which broke up the, the, the system. This is uh, January, February, March, April 2013, and this is the pressure at the various levels. So it's completely disrupted, indicating the sudden stratospheric warming. How sudden stratospheric warming affects the whole atmosphere? So the air temperature increases suddenly, producing widespread effects on weather, air, chemistry, and telecommunications. So I showed you